King G. Gross sight. ENT. <laughs> Rock with it. Rock with it. Rock with it. Rock with it. Let me, let me pop my shit. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pop my shit. Hands up. What is going on, Foo? Antoine. What's what up? up? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Oh man, it's it's been a day. It's been a day. <laughs> it's been a day. <laughs> I experienced I think this can't be my first winter storm in Nebraska. I've been here three years, but I don't know. No, no. Every time feels like the first time. And I, <laughs> I think to myself, did I go through this last year? I don't know. We've had this. They didn't have blizzards, all that type stuff. Come I don't, on, I don't know. Maybe I've been inside. I don't, <laughs> maybe I've just been in, in safe places. Indoors. <laughs> Indoors. <laughs> No, for real. I must have been indoors like Spongebob when all this was going down. It's getting pretty crazy, you know. It's wild. But, hey, you ready to start this interview? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get into it. Real excited. Hopefully, we have a good time. Some good questions lined up for you. Hopefully, the audience enjoys them just as much as I know I will. And I hope you do as well. (laughs) Let's get into it. All right. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this first question. It'll start real nice and easy. So, Fu, what is a blurred to you? On a high level, blurred is black nerd. But to me, it's more of a culture or more of like an identity. Um, black nerds being able to have a safe space, to have our own space in the nerd community to where our culture mingles in with the things that we're interested in like how we have anime raps and we have i can't tell you the amount of times i've used memes from like different animes to just describe things just going on Mm -hmm. in my life or just the enjoyment of being able to talk because you know how we talk you know how we get down we have our own lingo we have our own way of saying things and being able to integrate that with mm-hmm. discussing the things that we're passionate about you know that's what it what it's about you know right. i agree i agree i feel you on that yeah we definitely got our own lingo you know we've been back in like our college days and stuff the way we used to communicate with memes alone Right. I mean, like anime type stuff like that, cartoons, all that type of stuff. It was wild. It's crazy. It's our own type of communication, honestly. And I feel like it just creates this bonding space, you know? Right. And I love that it's a it's a word for it because it's not like it, you're not Antoine who does this stuff and, oh, he also likes anime. You know, you're Antoine. You are blurred. And blurred just means so many things that you could be in. You could like anime. You could like video games. You could like... um Trying to think of some other you got the shoe fantasy heads, stuff. car heads out here that they nerd right. out about this type of stuff. So the nerd, the anime sneakers. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> all of that. Like um, today I just saw that Adidas and Yu Gi Oh are doing a collaboration. So it's like mixing that black culture of what it means to why do we have so many shoes? Why do mm-hmm. we make sure you know we fresh from head to toe? Mm-hmm. And to intermingle that like with an anime T shirt anime collabs sneakers it's just you know it's we're able i love it i love the identity of it in the way that we're able to intermingle the things of black culture that we're already accustomed to to Mm -hmm. those aspects of what it means to be a nerd because at this point it's not really um when we were growing up you know nerd was something to be frowned upon oh you're a nerd but now it's like, heck yeah, you like that you know, nerdy? It's real popular now. Every mainstream, right. everybody know about it now. Everybody like, oh yeah, I used to watch this anime. I, I like that too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a so, bond. It's it's exactly <laughs> what you said. At this point of time, it's a bonding mechanism. Mm-hmm. I love to see it though. I love being a blurt. I love being a blurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go on to the next question. What made you start the Blurred Mob podcast? Basically picking off the first answer, but more in a personal. Is, um, I used to work on an app project 
with me and my friends. You were there, Antoine. You were mm-hmm. there. I was there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, after those meetings, we used to have these hour-long discussions, and they weren't about, like, we would, of course, catch up, but it would always, we would always, you know, like, zone in on some topic. It could be anime, Marvel, DC, mm-hmm. The Witcher. We've had, we talked about Game of Thrones. We've We've talked about a plethora of stuff. Uh-huh. And, you know, two uh, members out of that same group were starting their podcast. And, you know, I was like, hmm, if I was to start a podcast, what would it be about? And I'm sitting there listening to everybody having their different point of views. Same topic now. Different mm-hmm. point of views. Some people agree. Some people disagree. We never got into, like, a full-on argument. Never got hostile. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what if we took this to the next level right? and made this a podcast, you know, because mm-hmm. these we have interesting opinions. And sometimes I, I felt like that other people should hear what we have to say on these topics. The arguments. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> other, other people should hear what we have to, we have to say, you know? Right. I think there's some pretty interesting topics. I think you guys, uh, you cover a lot of different. I don't, I don't know if I want to call it the genre, but you cover a lot of different topics on the Blurred Mile podcast. You mm-hmm. know, it's not just strictly anime. It's not just strictly DC, movies, Marvel, all that type of stuff. You guys talk about sneakers. You guys talk about like a, a lot of things, and I think I appreciate that aspect. It, it's like it opens it up to a, a bigger audience. Well, and- it wasn't like that at first, so just to give you a little insight. So when I first mm-hmm. started the podcast, it was exactly how you just said it was. Mm-hmm. The episodes were center focused on one thing. This is a mm-hmm. Marvel episode. This is a DC episode. So when I finished the first ten episodes, um, I had to sit down with my cousin who was helping me at the time. And one of her biggest things was that you guys aren't expanding enough into what it means to be a blur. Mm-hmm. Just like how you said, how we just we talk about multiple topics, sneakers, video games. Marvel, DC, anime, like our episodes can traverse so many things in an hour and 30 minutes, but it wasn't like that at first. Mm -hmm. So when I brought Ryan and Ralph on, the biggest goal that I had for season two, the next set of episodes is that we need to talk about more stuff. We need to exemplify that definition of a blur that I just gave you. Mm -hmm. So that moment, that come to Jesus moment that I had is what set us on the course to what most people enjoy about the podcast. Now, the multiple topics, mm-hmm. being able to traverse the conversation into different areas of nerd culture. All right. Okay. 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 I'd like to see it. Tune in, you know, blur my podcast. Tune in to the blur my podcast. You always got find you. something that you'll love. Different we topics. Got you. <laughs> Okay, okay. Let's get into some other questions. Well, before I get into that, one more question for you about the Blur Mob. Will the Blur Mob be attending any events in 2023? Of course. Well, our big event that all three of us, um, all four of us actually, are going to is DreamCon. We went to DreamCon 2022. You know, we got a little taste of one, it was my first convention, so a taste of my first convention, a taste of DreamCon, a taste of being in that blurred community, the networking, seeing uh, all of the different cosplays, seeing how it is to interact in that space. So we took that experience. We got some ideas lined up that we want to execute for DreamCon, so I'm definitely excited for that. For that. Um, I'm also attending uh san diego comic-con 2023 um the blur mob will be there but i'm not trying to do anything big just going for the experience right. but um definitely catch us dream con 2023 dream con is, go- is going live it's going live going austin live. texas <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be hot <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right all right let's go let's go all right, next question. If you, Foop, were born with your choice of, of bending based on the Avatar series, what would your bending ability be? Fire. Okay. It, 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 it's straight, it's straightforward. I know we had an Avatar versus. 
in my argument that water bending was superior. But I have to be a firebender. It's hmm. just so it's just something one, I have to be a firebender. Two, I want blue fire. I want hmm. it. Mm-hmm. I want the blue fire. <laughs> I want the um lightning bending. I want it. So you want, want to be it. on your Azula game. Basically, but like <laughs> without going like batshit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like without uh, that, like without that part. But what if it comes <laughs> with it though? <laughs> that's like I what just, if you can't just, get these blue flames without going batshit crazy? <laughs> I just don't feel like that's fair. <laughs> I just, you know what? That is the sacrifice I'm willing to make. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get, listen, I'm going to get these blue fat flames. Because you know what that means? That means that I'm so good that my fire is not even the same color as y'all's. Right. I know I'm not in my right mind, but can you, <laughs> can you fire ben, But can you fire been better than me? <laughs> well, who gonna pop me though? But, but who gonna go pop me though? Listen, I I hope it would not come to that. I hope I can just be a firebender, perfect my craft, and get my blue flames, be able to bend my lightning, and you know, go about my business. I will be humble. I'll be a cabbage seller. I will. No, I'll you teach. No, you I'll, I wouldn't sell no cabbage. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, though, is that I will be a regular citizen. I won't mm-hmm. cause no noise. I won't conquer no kingdoms. Mm-hmm. I just want my blue flames and my lightning. And we straight. Okay. okay. The avatar does not have to worry about me. <laughs> 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 the avatar does not have to worry about me. Okay, okay, that's interesting because I did think you were gonna go with the water because I know you were like the blood uh, bending type. I know you like that, so okay. Nah, it's because I guess with the water bending, the superior water benders, the where they live. We just <laughs> talked about this morning. That I don't like this cold. Why would I? <laughs> no, aren't they like the South Pole? South Pole, North Pole, yep. a lot of poles. It's water <laughs> around this whole planet, but y'all in the North and South Pole, like that is a choice. That's a choice. That's not. That's not like oh, we just put y'all here. That is a choice. I don't know nothing about that lifestyle, but that's not me. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not me. I like the beach. I like when it's hot. Fire Nation, me. Okay. Okay. That's, okay. Interesting. I'd have to go earth bending, but you know. I can see you being an earth bender. I can see you <laughs> <laughs> I can see you hop some rocks. Get my you metal give, bending you, game, all that type stuff. If yeah. it wasn't if it wasn't earth bending, I would have thought you would have picked air bending. Maybe that would be I, my second. I, I think that would be my second. It's just you so quick, Antoine. Why would you yeah. not want <laughs> <laughs> well, also, y'all can call me Twinkle Toes. Yeah, <laughs> Tweety mm. Bird. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate. I see, and that, that's why I want it. That's why. Because now I'm getting bullied. He said he done. <laughs> all he did, all he did, was spit in the air one time. <laughs> and now they calling me names. <laughs> now we calling you Kite. <laughs> I'm good. No earth bending me. Oh okay. man. Okay. Interesting choice. All right. Let's move on to the next one. All right. DC Scarlet Witch Zatanna versus Marvel Scarlet Witch Wanda. Who's winning? You said DC Scarlet Witch Zatanna. C. That's a new name for it. That's a new name. But basically, this is a Tana versus Scarlet Witch. This is their version of that. Okay. Let's see. I I watched the Death Battle. If you've never watched Death Battle, watch Death Battle. Mm-hmm. Scarlet Witch got her ass whooped. Mm. But... And I'm going to stick beside that, actually. <laughs> I picked the Tana because Scarlet Witch can do some damage, but like, I don't know. I've never seen Scarlet Witch go 1v1. Yeah. Well, 
Well, I guess I have in WandaVision. I don't know. I just feel like Zatanna because Zatanna, mm, the way she be doing them spells, like Wanda be trying to do something, Zatanna say, uh, like Zatanna, the way she works is um, anything she says backwards is basically a spell. Mm. So Wanda trying to do her thing. Zatanna can say, blow your head up backwards and she done. So just words, that's it. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She knows other spells too, but like her whole gimmick is, you know, whatever she says backwards happens. Hmm. So like if I'm Zatanna and I'm Scarlet Witch and I just want, you know, I want to end this real quick and stop your heart. I say stop your heart backwards. You done. What if um, what if Scarlet Witch closed her mouth up? Did she do that on that movie? She did that to somebody. She did it. She did it to Black Bolt. But I feel like where they messed up was is that Mr. Fantastic told Scarlet Witch what mm-hmm. his powers was. Mm-hmm. I just okay. don't feel like Zatanna would be that stupid. Yeah, so by the time Scarlet Witch will realize is, you know, it's too late. It's too- right. <laughs> she, she already did what she needed to do. So I feel like if Zatanna is quick enough, Zatanna's smart, and I feel like she'll be quick enough. I think she can handle Wanda. It's mm. already happened in death battle. But mm. I'm but my opinion, Foop's opinion, Foop's corner. <laughs> <laughs> I think Zatanna gonna handle that ass. <laughs> oh, Wanda, no. <laughs> Wanda, no. Get up. For the kids. Your kids wait for you. Ah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> The kids are waiting for you. Your kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's evil. That's evil. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, okay. I, okay. Fair argument. All right, let's move on to the next question. If you were in the world of Transformers and you had an Autobot or Decepticon as your partner, what would they be able to transform into? One. I want to preface this answer saying that I want a Decepticon. <laughs> of course. I, I, because the Decepticons turn into the coolest shit. Mm-hmm. Like, the only thing cool about the Autobots is that Bumblebee turns into a 2007 Camaro. Yeah, that's bad. Like, yeah. that was a whole culture shift. Those. Optimus Prime got that big truck. <laughs> and I like Optimus Prime in that big truck, but everybody else just trucks. And yeah. a couple sports cars. Mm-hmm. But the Decepticons, these folks was turning into fighter jets, uh, the big ass military trucks, <laughs> tanks, <laughs> suburban SUVs. They must, <laughs> they must got the update. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, the Decepticons turn into the coolest shit. So I would want a Decepticon. And I think I would want it to turn into like a foreign car like a Lamborghini or maybe a Rolls Royce like I want a bougie Decepticon that turns into a Rolls Royce Mm. that's it that's what I want okay okay and he doesn't like fight with the rest of the Decepticons oh okay because I was going to say he's like like, y'all ghetto (laughs) (laughs) like every 10 seconds y'all be trying to do the same thing (laughs) when we lose every time y'all don't want to do nothing else like, y'all don't want to go to no another planet. Like, we've lost twice. Y'all don't want to go to no another planet. Y'all want to attack the same people with the same thing. We get our butt with every time. I think he should be a little bit bougie. Like, I was doing that like a retired Decepticon. Oh, like, yeah, I yeah, was, yeah, yeah. like, I was about that life, but I'm in a, I'm a Royce Royce now. <laughs> <laughs> like, he used to transform into a... um. A 2000s Impala, a, 2000, a black 2000 Impala. But like after that last battle, he was like, nah, I'm finna change my life. <laughs> you know that meme of that girl that be walking up the steps into yeah. a new year? <laughs> so he walks up the steps into the new year and he turns into a Rolls Royce. And all of a sudden he turns into a Rolls Royce. <laughs> so there it go. Okay, okay. Okay, I got an odd one. I think if I had to choose, I want a dinosaur. I ain't even watched that movie, but I want so a dinosaur. Want a di- so you want a mm-hmm. dino bot. Yep. That is... 
You know they coming out with their new movie where they transform into gorillas and shit. I saw that. <laughs> a dinosaur. I think that's the one I stopped watching the Transformers franchise because yeah. I was like, y'all, dinosaurs. <laughs> What got me at the beginning of the movie was that they were trying to make Autobots out of Megatron's head. And it was just like, y'all not, what's not clicking? This not right. So then when the Autobots start attacking everybody, they're like, oh my God, how would this happen? Look at the material. <laughs> Look at the material. And then Optimus can't beat the high tech Decepticon. So he goes to get what? Dinosaurs, <laughs> and that blew me. <laughs> I just think me and my dino boy. I'm gonna get on his back. He's gonna take me to work. Y'all he gonna, gonna choo 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 every morning at eight a.m. Y'all going to be so <laughs> destructive because the people in Transformers do not read the room. They will stay on the street while the fight is happening. I'm watching the Transformers fight. And okay, sure, y'all touch down. We weren't expecting y'all to show up, so we running through the streets. We panicking. They fighting twenty minutes later. Y'all still running in the street. Why y'all still on why, the same street? Why running? are y'all? Why are y'all still in the street? <laughs> like they can't read the room. There are alien robots fighting outside. The U.S. military somehow understands the alien robots, and you are still on the street. <laughs> At this point, this is. Like above your pay grade. <laughs> Every morning, y'all go hear my dino board transform. And, he, he and I feel like, and at that moment, I would have to bring my Decepticon out of retirement because <laughs> at this point, you're disturbing the peace. Like he went into retirement to have peace. You come out with this dinosaur disturbing the peace. We're going to have to chunk, 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 and we're going to have to handle you right quick. We're going to have to handle you right quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> we gonna have we gonna have to handle you. So you come outside with your Dinobot, and we gonna handle you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fair. I understand. <laughs> no hard, no hard feelings. <laughs> it was choose another one. <laughs> <laughs> every move, every Transformers movie, they bring in some new Autobots. It's okay. You will get another one. They will make sure <laughs> you get another one. <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Good answer. Let's move on to our next question. <laughs> Do you agree with Thanos? <laughs> Do you agree with Thanos? And I think Thanos had. Idea. I think Thanos had the right. You know, thesis. You know how you start your essay. <laughs> Here's my thesis. This is the problem I'm trying to solve. Now, the rest of the essay, that's where it got weird. Uh, because his thesis was like, you know, there's not enough resources. There's too many people. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Not enough resources, too many people. But your solution was kill half the population. Why not just double the resources? <laughs> We don't have enough resources. You have a gauntlet with six stones that can do whatever you want. Double the resources. <laughs> Double. Because look at it this way, Antoine. It's you and me, right? And we mm -hmm. got one burger. Mm -hmm. So, of course, one burger is not going to feed you and me, right? Because mm -hmm. we like to eat. We want a full burger. Mm -hmm. It's the solution kill you and eat the burger. <laughs> or is the solution to make another burger so we can both have a burger which, which, which one sounds more reasonable oh I think <laughs> maybe he just went I don't know I, I don't know I, I think he went a bit extreme <laughs> I think he got a hold of that gauntlet and them stones, and he was like, I can do anything, so like, what's the biggest possible extreme thing that I can do right now? And it was kill half the population. Kill half the population. But I just feel like maybe we should have just doubled the resources. We ain't got enough cows. Okay, let's make more cows. You know? <laughs> we ain't got enough grass. Okay, let's get some more grass. You know? Yeah, okay. 
So the idea was there. Well, not the idea, but his what his, 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 his yeah the problem that he was pointing out definitely is a problem. It, it exists, but his follow through. It, it, he, <laughs> his follow through, and he followed through. He did follow through. I would be so mad if we were sitting here right now, and I just <laughs> <So> disintegrated. <laughs> I would be so upset. Like I wouldn't even have time to like. I would panic at first because I'm turning into a Rillo pack. I am turning into Rillo guts. But then after that, I would be highly upset that I am turning into Rillo guts right now. Like that, that is crazy. That's so wild. We don't even get the option. We, we, we and, and, and it's just it's just randomized. It's, just, it's random. It's definitely it's definitely going to be 50%. Who falls into that 50%? We don't know. Your niece and them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're not a murderer. That's what I, I was know. trying to find out. Yeah. <laughs> Did I pass? You passed. <laughs> Because if you said, I agree, and that was it, I was going to call you a murderer. We're just going to have to stop the interview right now. <laughs> the authorities are on the way. We're going to cut this short. We all, I already had the number dialed. <laughs> <laughs> all I had the press was called. <laughs> if this got a bit too serious, we was going to hit that button. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, let's move on to our next question. This is an anime-based question. All right, so whose trauma slash backstory do you feel was the worst? Aaron dealing with the Titans, Tanjiro and the Michael Jackson experience, or Kilua in the training slash torture to become an assassin? I want to make it known that all three were bad. <laughs> Terrible. But the worst one, I think, has to be um, is it's between Aaron and Tanjiro. Mm -hmm. Because let's start with Aaron. You look up one day and it's a titan, like the biggest titan that you've ever seen standing over your wall. And then this other one that's built like Hulk Hogan (laughs) runs and tears down a brick wall and just causes mass chaos. You don't know what's going on. People are dying in front of your eyes. And then you have to stand there and watch your mama get ate. Oh, my God. That's the point I was going to point out. A Titan. Oh, my God. I kind of feel like that has to be number one. Tanjiro is number two because, yes, his whole family got murdered. But he didn't see it. That's true. I think think Tanjiro would be number one. Not trying to, you know, compare trauma and be like, his trauma is better than his trauma. His Mm -hmm. worse than his trauma. But I'm just saying, like, he, he didn't see it. Like, very traumatic. That mm-hmm. you came home the next morning, your whole family was murdered. But just imagine the route Demon Slayer could have taken had Tanjiro had shown up and Muzan, aka Michael Jackson, was in like mid crime, mm-hmm. like mid murder, mm-hmm. like murdering his whole family. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I agree with that. I definitely have to agree with that. When that, um, when that Titan picked his mom up, and I think she like yeah. bite half of her body, and he was, I, yeah, they they munched like I, I would have been through right there. I would have been through. It's like, it's it, a lot going on. It's it's my fa- my mama get eight. These Titans running chaos. through the city. They running through the city. It's, it's mass chaos. I'm through. I am the through. City, the city is done. <laughs> like we were not expecting this to happen today. This was not in the schedule. Mm, man, the city is already in danger and then on top of it i have to watch a titan eat my mama that's wild that's i have wild. to watch then the plot twist i had to watch my brother's mama eat my mama yeah yeah that's mm. i i think tanjiro's whole thing stops with Muzan killing his family and yes. him protecting Nezuko. Yeah. Aaron's thing is a continuous, continuous. line of <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what the <thing? laughs> Because the things that he found out like throughout his lifetime that connected all back, and then when it came full circle to the attack and how his mama died, I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's trauma like throughout the entire series, honestly. I, I honestly. you gotta be real you have to be real strong 
like real strong. I'm talking about you. You just, just got to be numb at this point to do any of the I things mean, that they were doing. You got to be numb. I, I just and the and the weird thing, I guess, my the interesting thing about Attack on Titan is because you have Paradis, and then you have I can't remember the island that Aaron and them are on, but mm-hmm. both of them think they're doing the right thing. Exactly. Like, uh, Reiner and old dude, when they tow up the block, mm-hmm. they thought they was doing the right thing. Right. The and name. then with and then Aaron and Mikasa and all of them, they think they doing the right thing, killing all the Titans. Right. And all of it is just this twisted ideology. It's a mess. Like, and that's why we at where we at now. Yeah, that it's... everybody dies. So man, I'm talking about the kids, everybody. Don't get used to nobody in the show because they gonna die. Don't get. Don't used you say that's my favorite die. character because you ain't gonna see him. You ain't gonna see him for long because it, it's no. wild. Okay, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that because that yeah, Attack on Titan. That's a that's a journey. That's back to back. <laughs> that's a real... like like every season we learn something new <laughs> about this man family. Like honestly, I had enough. I will. Yeah, I want to make it through the first season. <laughs> I honestly, I'm surprised that Aaron has made it this long, and I'm also not surprised that he turned out the way, the way that he, he did. Yeah, it. yeah. I, you, it's it's annoying, but you can, how can you blame him at this point? You gotta you gotta stop him though. Like <laughs> genocide, like <laughs> man, like we, this is going back to the Thanos thing. Like kill everybody, <laughs> like, kill everybody. Like the thesis is, is that both sides of this arrangement is messed up, and we need to fix it. I agree mm-hmm. with you. Everybody's ideologies, what they're fighting for, is lies, false. Like it's not right. The solution to kill everybody, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up in the tear the town up. I don't. He has I'll... three. He has three titans. Woo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. I agree with you on that one. Let's go on to our next question. All right. About how many pairs of shoes are in Foop's closet? I got you. I count it. <laughs> I count it. I had to for this one. Mm-hmm. Because I was like, I could guess, but you know what? what, what you know? See, this is be accurate. Let's be accurate. So sneakers. And when I say sneakers, I'm talking Jordans, Nikes. New Balance, you know anything that you would your mama would call a tennis shoe. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anything your mama would call a tennis shoe. Put them tennis shoes on. <laughs> I have fifty two of those. Okay, okay, okay. I have eight pairs of Vans, eight pairs of dress shoes slash boots for a total of sixty eight pairs of shoes. That's a lot of shoes. You it's know. been a co- election over time. Like you would hear sixty eight and be like, "Damn!" <laughs> but if you think about it as I really got into shoes when I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I really got into shoes when I got money, when I got a job. <laughs> uh, that that's a good motivator. Yeah. And so like <laughs> when I started getting the funds to like to buy the shoes that I want, that was like 2019. So this collection has been growing since. 2019. So what's that like? Four years? Yeah, just about. And I, I now I've given away some shoes. You know, you get some shoes. It's like oh, I don't really want these, or all oh, mm-hmm. these kind of beat up, or oh, I didn't worn these out. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like, it's been a a growing collection. I just didn't sit down one day and decided I wanted 68 pairs of shoes. <laughs> it don't it don't work like that. So if I steal like 20 pairs, you ain't gonna notice. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to notice the first pair because I have my shoes organized. I know where my shoes are. I make sure to put my shoes back. Whenever I wear a pair of shoes, I make sure to put them back in the same place. Mm. Because the the best thing that I like about myself is that I'm a visual learner and I have a photographic memory. Mm. So because I stack my shoes a certain way, I know what it's, what it's supposed to look like. And I know where them shoes supposed to be at. So the first time you take one shoe, you can take one shoe. I'ma know it's gone. But what if I were like replace it with some like some buddies or something? You <laughs> You don't think I know what my shoes look like? <laughs> but it ain't gonna take you like a couple of days to be like, 
These aren't things. These aren't things. I'll, I'll, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. I have gone back to the fact that I have so many pairs of shoes. I don't. I don't wear the shoes. There's not a pair of shoes that I wear consistently. Right. Like sometimes I buy shoes. I wear them once or twice, and then I might not wear them for like the next couple months. Mm-hmm. So like, I'll give you this: if you take a pair of shoes that I ain't really looking for until it's time for me to look for them, you might got me. Okay. You, okay. You, might, you might get me. <laughs> you might get me, okay. but nah, I'm a when I'm gonna know when my shoes missing. Okay. Especially a 20 pair. That was outrageous. <laughs> you give me a foot reduction surgery and then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to just go in there and pick which one I want. <laughs> if I ever see you with the same size shoe I have, we going to have a problem. We going to have a problem. Uh, this is not going to become sneaker wives. We are not about to share shoes. It's you by your own. <laughs> I will set you up. I will get you the websites. I will show you when to buy, when to buy. You know, we'll figure out all your shoe sizes for the different for the different silhouettes. I will sit down with you, but you're not wearing my shoes. You're not wearing my shoes. That's done. Okay, noted. <laughs> okay, that's a lot of shoes. All right, let's move on to our next question. All right, so it's safe to say that the podcast is one of your hobbies. Is there anything else that you do on your spare time outside outside of this in work? Um, I have a few hobbies that I've fallen off with. One because I was doing school um, I'm taking a break this semester, but like with school, trying to do the podcast, trying to maintain a full time job, it's a lot. So some some of the hobbies got to go by the wayside. Mm-hmm. But um, I really like movies, so going to the movies, um, or even like going on HBO Max or Netflix, finding some random movie and watching it, mm-hmm. like um. Same the same time last year when I wasn't doing anything, I think I watched like four movies that I've never seen before in a row. Because mm-hmm. I really just like the way, you know how. One point in time, I really got into the like how people write screenplays, mm-hmm. like how people act out, you know, the certain scenes, like the the intricate pieces of the movie. Mm-hmm. So I would say watching movies is one of my hobbies that I I want to get back into. Um, video games. Um, back in back in the day, in the college, when we had no bills, no sponsorability, all that good life type stuff. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would, <laughs> I would get on the system. PlayStation Four mm-hmm. held me all the way through college. I could beat a game in like two days, right? Two, three days. Oh, yeah, the days. But it's just like adulting. Mm-hmm. Like, when do you have time? Like, I have to schedule. Like, I have to mark something in my calendar. Not Today, we are playing real. the game. Not for real. Next week, 5 o'clock, after work, playing Six this. O'clock. <laughs> Six o'clock. Get on the game. Play it for an hour. Move on to the next thing. That's, yeah. Like, the last game I completed in full was Pokemon Violet. But mm-hmm. I got a stack of um, PS5 games that I need to go ahead and crank out. Right. So now that I'm taking off for the semester, I have a good thing like eight months or so before I got to go back to school. So mm-hmm. hopefully that time I can fill it back with the hobbies that kind of fell by the wayside because of the other three things that I were doing. And then sometimes I have spontaneous hobbies as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know when that was. I still blame Ryan for it. But all these Funko Pops, that just wasn't like a, this is a hot, collecting Funko Pops is a hobby. Yeah. Um, I, I hear like, it's kind of hard to find some of them. Some of them are hard to find. Some of them expensive. Mm-hmm. Then like, if you want to collect like a certain collection, because like, as you guys can see in the background, or if you can't see, I got a lot of Sailor Moon Funko Pops. Mm-hmm. That is a, I had to go to an additional I had to go to a website 
and figure out what's all of the Sailor Moon Funko Pops to complete the collection. Mm -hmm. I haven't completed the collection because they're expensive. But trying to be dedicated to buying Funko Pops and trying to complete a collection takes some time, takes some dedication. What's, um, a, what's about the most uh, money you spent on a Funko Pop? $70. Okay. It was it was her. Uh -oh. Super Sailor Moon. Not a rich bit. Special, <laughs> special edition. She was $70. The most mm. recent Funko Pop I got. I got the Wakanda Forever with the Shuri. Oh, suit. okay. That's nice. Okay. But that's most recent. <laughs> so I don't know. I might I may get back into buying the Funko Pops. I kind of fell off, but um I don't know. I like to involve myself in a lot of stuff. I, I guess I'm a more of like a spontaneous um, type person. Mm -hmm. Like if I really get into something, I'm going to do it for like real intense. I'm a really, I'm a really get into it, you know? Right, right. And then when I'm done, you know, or it gets old or it's like, okay, this was fun. Let me go do something else. Then, you know, we go to the next thing. Mm -hmm. Then I find the next thing, and then I get really into it. You see, mm -hmm. <laughs> you see where we're going with this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting hobby. Never had a. Fun I never bought a Funko Pop. I don't. I never had a Funko Pop. I might get into it though. But they yeah. pretty. It, it, you can find some pretty cheap one. Walmart has them. Target has them. Right. Amazon has a few that you can, depending on what you're looking for, they might. The lowest I've seen I paid for a Funko Pop was twelve dollars. Okay. So hmm. it really just depends. Like what I learned is like the rarity. That's what of I was them, gonna say. Yeah. What drives drives up the price. Right. So if you find one that's like, uh, it's a Funko Pop, it'd be like twelve dollars. But if you find one that's like never before seen, mm. we only got six. <laughs> yeah. Them just gonna be them just gonna be expensive. Seventy dollars is wild. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you saying seventy dollars is wild, but the reason I have not finished my Sailor Moon collection is because the ones that I need to complete the collection are over one hundred and fifty dollars. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. So it's just that is dedication. So I mean, I, okay, for a hobby though, that's kind of understandable, you know. Yeah, I, I guess that's what you can. I mean, do do what you love. My big thing is do what you love. You know, if you really want it, go get it. Like that's just me. Like if I want it, I got it. It's mine. I spent it. It's mine. Ooh, I spent it. <laughs> like honestly. Okay. All right. Let's go on to our next question. All right. Who would you prefer as your enemy, Superman or the Powerpuff Girls? It has to be Superman. <laughs> and, 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 and my explanation is not why I chose Superman. It's why I'm not picking the Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> you are not safe from the Powerpuff Girls <laughs> at all. They were, they broke into jail. <laughs> Like they beat up Mojo Jojo, put him in jail, <laughs> broke into jail, and then kept beating up Mojo Jojo. Like what? Buttercup was beating up people for their teeth, but she can get money from the two fairy. It's just it's chaos. It's mad chaos. You are not safe from the Powerpuff Girls. Like Superman has his weaknesses. Like you know, if I ever wanted to do magic, Superman. Sweetness is magic, or I just hide in a basement full of lead because he can't see through that, <laughs> or I just find me some kryptonite. Them little girls, <laughs> it's a gang of them, too. It's a gang, like, even if, even, even if I cornered one, like, even if I cornered one, it's still two of them, and all of them got additional abilities, like, all of them got. The base abilities, like they strong, they can fly, they can shoot laser beams, but then they got extra abilities. Like but like Blossom has frost breath. Mm -hmm. Bubbles got that sonic screen. Mm -hmm. And I forgot. And Buttercup has that darkness thing. I mm -hmm. I forgot what, what Buttercup's additional power is. 
that's crazy. I'm not. I would never ever become an enemy of the power pole <laughs> unless I'm like Tony Stark's long lost black cousin, and I just have like all of the tech and all of the defenses I need to protect myself from the power of girls. But I. No, um, whatever the you know what I am going to be the main supplier of the power pop. <laughs> y'all need fruit snacks. I got <laughs> snacks. it's nap time. You need me to pick up the phone. Y'all go take a nap. I will pick up the phone. I I'll let you. them know you're taking a nap. I got y'all Capri Suns. <laughs> I'm going to Sam's and getting each of y'all the four pack. You get your own four pack of Capri Suns. <laughs> Like what? What y'all want? Some chips? Like I will be the main supplier of the Powerpuff Girls. That's wild. Um, they are wild. They're deadly. I, I just feel they like are, imagine just being a regular civilian in that world. You stealing something they, real small, and they show up, and, and they show up. and they bust. They I'm talking about they busting teeth. Like y'all ever seen how them people be looking at the Powerpuff Girls? Like they with it back here. Like you need Powerpuff Girls insurance to live in, <laughs> in Townsville. You need PPG insurance because the thing about the Powerpuff Girls is they do not care where they land. They don't. They do. like you can be eating dinner and they just bust through your house, throw some bows, fly out your house, and your house is done. They don't know who house they fell into. They don't care how much your table costs. They don't know where you got it. They don't care that that mashed potato, the mashed potatoes took three days to make. They do not <laughs> care. Oh, it was potato salad. I tried to make a SpongeBob reference. <laughs> my, my, what I'm trying to say is, is they do not care. Like, no. That's kind of wild. I feel like. <laughs> Superman, I feel- mean, any, Superman gonna try to talk to me. Yeah. So this, this, this thing about Superman, I might do some evil, and he might he'll show up and he'll be like, "Hey, let's talk this out. This isn't like you. I know you. You're not like this. And you know, I may be able to get some words in, but like as soon as the Papo girls hear that I'm robbing a bank, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. So they gonna like, they gonna whoop your ass, then go back to school. <laughs> they done left. Pokey Oaks, they didn't shot out of kindergarten, shot at nap time, came and whooped my ass, and flew back to school and went back to nap time like they just did, like whoop my ass, like that's crazy. That is so crazy. Oh man, that's. I feel that's like crazy. yeah, I feel like you'd be crazy to not agree with that. I just I prefer Superman. Superman is the best bet. Like, at least you'll be able to, like, state your case. Like, (laughs) Superman will ask you, you know, like, why are you stealing this money? You know, the Powerpuff Girls don't care. Like, oh, you stealing money, Pap? They get their phone call. That's it. That's it. That's it. it. They don't even hear the... I I am under the belief that they don't even hear the whole phone call. They just pick up the phone. Yes, Mayor, they robbing the... Bye. (laughs) They get him. The mayor get on the phone. Mojo Jojo, say less. What? <laughs> say less. Oh. Like, I don't even think they hear the whole phone call, honestly. Uh, I definitely have to agree with you on that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get on to our next question. All right. So let's bring it on back to the part of uh, podcast. All right. So what motivates you to keep making content for the Blurred Mob podcast? I got two things. The team and the, the fans or the reception. I'm going to start with the team. Um, I just like we have like these weekly meetings, you know. And we discuss, and you've seen the, the ideas that we come up with. Sometimes these meetings last an hour. Sometimes they last an hour, 30 minutes. These meetings ain't used to last that long. We used to get in there, talk for a good 10, 15 minutes, you know, go record the next episode. It's done. But, like, the meetings are getting longer. And the reason that they're getting longer is that because I have 
found a team that is so passionate about the stuff that we are doing and so passionate about the content that we are putting out and so passionate about the things that we can do to expand our brand and to integrate us more into the blurred culture is that it's exciting. It's exciting to see people come up with different that I didn't, it's like, it's not me doing all the work. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not coming up with all of these different ideas. These things that we put out to you don't always, don't always come from me. And we're always looking, and with the team, we're always looking to expand. And we're always looking to what's going to be the next big thing for the podcast. Right. And really having the team and being on this journey is that what keeps me going. Because I know that when anybody, if I have an idea, you guys are going to entertain it. We're, we're going to sit down. We're going to discuss, we're going to flesh this out. We're going to ask the right questions. We're going to, if we're going to do this, everybody, not just me, we're going to make sure that we do this right. Mm -hmm. And having a team that is going to make sure that we come out on top, no matter what, yeah, that that pushes me to keep going. Because I would honestly say if you guys did not care how this went either way, I don't think I would care as much, Right, you know. Because why, why are we doing this? You guys don't care. You guys aren't passionate. You know, mm -hmm. what, what are we doing? But the fact that we are passionate and the fact that we do care and the fact that we do have, you know, sometimes we come to decisions that everybody don't like. But, you know, it's never any hard feelings. It's never any, you know, friction between the team is that. We are passionate to making sure that the podcast is always in a good light and that we're putting our best foot forward, okay. which yeah. leads into the reception because, you know, you get what you put out. Mm -hmm. And the reception that we've been getting with, like, different ideas that we come up with, the collabs that we have doing, like, people are watching. When we really, mm -hmm. like, fully took in that people are watching, that people are listening, and that people are willing to share their opinions with us, agree with our opinions, disagree. That's what, you know, even pushes that. Why are we so passionate about the stuff that we put at the podcast? Because we know we have fans that are watching us and listening to us for the next big thing. Right. So, you know, you got to. Right. You have to. Like, at some point in time, we almost at, like, 500 followers, but what's going to happen to the day when we hit 1,000, 10,000, right. 100,000, right. a million? You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. I guess that brings me into the next question. What does success look like uh, in, for the Blur My Podcast for you? Really, it's, it's making the mob bigger. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when, so when we say the Blur Mob, we say you, me, Ryan, ralph mm -hmm. but you know if we want to go with the definition of a mob we know a mob is way bigger right so it's just building that network building that community you know you got the overarching blurred community and then we get our blurred mob mm -hmm. community to where that we give people the platform to share their content creations right um, we give people the platform to share their opinions on stuff that we talk about in our podcast, um, which we've kind of started doing. Um, we've done two collaborations as part of 2022, um, well, three collaborations, um, two of them, two of them have been interviews. One of them has been a movie review. And then on one of the interviews, the guest decided to stay and discuss some of the topics with us. And we got to get like a fourth POV mm -hmm. into the conversation that we had. So it's really success for me. It's just when we build that community, one of the um, content creators I follow that I look up to is RDC world. Cause we talked about dream con, mm -hmm. you know, they, how they started. <laughs> And where they are now 
and them still building up their brand, but providing that space for other content creators, black content creators, right. to emphasize on that, right. to network and to make their own content and to find their place into this community. If we could ever do something like that, or if we could ever give back or provide that space to the magnitude, like on that level, that would be great. Okay. Okay. Come on, losers, join the mob. <laughs> join the mob. You're a winner. Winners. <laughs> only winners. Only winners join the blurt mob. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if I'm a loser? And I want to be. You can also a- join. You can also <laughs> join the blur mob. The blur mob is ready to eat for everyone. Oh, <laughs> I feel so welcome. <laughs> I feel so involved. <laughs> Finally, a place for me. <laughs> you know. Okay. All right. Let's go on to our next question. All right. So, what have you learned from being on the blur mob podcast? Three things. Maybe three things. I said three because I might have three. But anyway, Mm -hmm. one, patience. You have to have patience Um, with anything, any idea that you have, even with, like, the initial start. You know, where we started and where we are now are, like, two different sides of the spectrum. But had I given up on the side of the spectrum where we weren't getting a lot of traffic, you know, I, I would wouldn't have been able to see everything that I'm seeing now with the podcast. Mm -hmm. So you have to be patient. You have to be patient with your content and going back to the team, you have to be patient with the team because it's like, um, how do I word this? I guess like we're working with so many people. Um, like I said, we are so passionate and so excited to get all these ideas out. But then at sometimes that based on we, we have lives outside of that. Mm-hmm. So with the patients, I guess you also have to have understanding for the people that you're working with. Right. Like sometimes we've, I won't say miss opportunities, but we've kind of, you know, let certain ideas go because somebody was busy or everybody wasn't down with it. And even though I may have felt like or somebody else may have felt like that it was a really good idea, we just couldn't make it work. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months go by and then that idea or something similar to that idea comes back up. And then at that moment, we can grab that opportunity. So it's just being patient, like everything that I always believe that everything that you want or every everything that you manifest is going to come with you come to you right. you just have to be patient you have to wait for it, Make it happen. like right. that moment that you wanted it to happen may have not have been that moment right so patience always patience that moment that you're looking for may not happen at that moment that big blow up that episode <laughs> that you thought was gonna blow up might not blow up. Right. But then two weeks later, somebody may watch that episode and they was like, this is the dopest episode I ever seen. Right. And that was blowing up. Oh my God. Oh my God. Won't he do it? I'm viral. <laughs> the second thing I've learned is, is that you have to constantly evolve. You can never get comfortable. Never. Never, ever get comfortable. You know, And which is what I appreciate about what we're doing with the Blurred Mob podcast is because we're constantly trying to find ways to evolve things that we've already done. Um, My biggest example of that is how we've evolved versus Tuesdays. Versus Tuesdays was just an Instagram post that we would put out every Tuesday with something versus something. And we would just let y'all comment. And, you know, go at it under the Instagram post or on Twitter and you guys vote. Then it turned into, okay, what if we started recording these Versus Tuesday, make it another segment alongside the regular episodes, and then the audience gets this. Not only do we get the audience's opinions, they get to hear and see our opinions. So you always have to evolve, you know. 
Because at a point in time, people may stop responding to the Instagram if we if we never would have started recording versus Tuesdays. Maybe the idea might have died off. You know, it may have gotten to a point in time to where, you know, we're not getting a lot of responses or we're getting a bit tired of trying to think of ideas just for an Instagram post that we're going to put out and nobody responds to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it, the idea might get stale. So you always, always have to evolve. You always have to think of things to push the ceiling, to break the ceiling is what I want to say. Right. And then the third thing I learned is that networking isn't important. Um, you can always build a community, you know, within yourselves, but having networking and having those connections helps out a lot. It helps out with building your community. It helps with getting more people into your content. And it definitely helps with trying to think of new ways to expand your content. Right. But you would never get these ideas and you would never get these experiences if you uh, if you didn't network. Right. So patience. Evolve evolution. Yeah. Constantly yeah. evolving in networking. Those are those are my big mm-hmm. and my big three. Okay, okay. Teach us a thing or two. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So this brings me to my last question for this interview. What can we expect from the Blur Mob podcast in 2023? Um, we got a ton of ideas coming. I we got another tournament coming. Um we're trying my big thing for 2023 is to get us into live content. So definitely be on the lookout for any live stream events that we got coming up. Um Trying to, you know, like I said, evolve like our mob reviews, regular episodes, different ways to engage with the audience. Um, we have a lot of stuff in that backlog. Right. Like, I'm, I'm thinking like I've said a couple things, but I was like, this is not even the bottom of the list. Mm-hmm. So we have a lot of things planned because, like I said before, we are very passionate about the content that we put out. And we are very passionate of making sure that the Blur Mob podcast comes out on top. Okay. So okay. be on the lookout All right, def- for, the, for the many things coming 2023. Definitely looking forward to it. Like I said earlier, join the nerd, join the mob nerds or blurs. Okay. All right. So, all right, Foop. So that was my last question for this interview. I hope you enjoyed this. As much as I have. This was great. This is great. This is great. I had a great time. Great. I might come back. Real, real personal. Real one-on-one. <laughs> all right. So that all right. So I'll go ahead and take us out. Um, like I said, I enjoyed this podcast, but I enjoyed this interview with you. Um, I know those listening, they probably will well, I hope they will have enjoyed it as much as we have. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the, all the things that's gonna come from the Blur Mob in 2023. I definitely wish the team, the entire team, the best. So with that being the best, the best, (laughs) the best, the best, best. best. and that's going to take us out. All right. All right, guys, this has been great, but that is the Blurred Mob tuning out. We just want to wish you guys good luck. Peace. Hands up. If you love them when you ain't staying 10 toes down, sure they ain't no looking at me. You can let them haters hate when they ain't somewhere. I'm smiling. I just tell them life's great.